Jared, in trying to understand the uniqueness of human beings, human sexuality is a core area that you focused on that certainly gets everyone's attention. What are some of the differences between human sexuality and the sexuality we see in the rest of the animal kingdom? We can get perspective on that by um, imagining what a sexually normal animal, a dog, uh -huh. would say about the human family's sexual habits. If you asked a dog what strikes you about human sexuality, the dog would say, there are three weird things about it. There's menopause. Can you believe they have sex when the woman is no longer fertile? Yep. There's concealed ovulation. I don't have any idea <laughs> whether the woman of the house is fertile today or not. And the worst of all, they have sex in private. They go into the bedroom and close the door instead of having sex in public like any self-respecting dog. Those are the three weird things about human sexuality. There are others, but those are a good Okay, story. so let's, let's, let's determine why those occur and how they have evolved in, in an evolutionary sense or, or a cultural sense. Menopause, female menopause. The vast majority of mammal species remain fertile until they die. In the case, there, are, there, there is a species with male menopause, a marsupial mouse of Australia, in which the males lose their fertility and then drop dead. Female menopause among 4,000 mammals is a test really only among humans, killer whales, and the short fin pilot whale. What's the advantage of menopause? From an evolutionary point of view, you would think that a woman losing her fertility, she can't pass on her genes. Well, paradoxically, it turns out that menopause is the best way for an older woman to pass on her genes. Childbirth is dangerous for traditional humans. Women die in childbirth. The older you are, the more likely you are to die in childbirth. So as you get older, um, it doesn't pay for you to try to grind out one more pregnancy. What does pay is to protect yourself against a pregnancy that may kill you and to remain alive and instead to devote yourself to provisioning and educating your grandchildren. Mm. So the paradoxically, menopause, the shutting down of reproduction, is for humans the best way for a woman to pass on her gene. But mm. men don't die in childbirth, and that's why <laughs> I do not have male menopause. <laughs> uh, but other animals, is, wouldn't a similar argument work for, for other animals? For other animals, for menopause to make sense, you have to have a, an animal in which old individuals are valuable. Uh -huh. Old humans are valuable. Old killer whales are also valuable. The, f the one and only time that I've seen killer whales in the wild, I was taken on a whale watching boat off of Seattle where the whales are individually identified and back by went some whales and the guide said, that whale there, that is a 70-year-old female killer whale, a postmenopausal accompanied by her 40-year-old son and 10-year-old <laughs> grandchild. She's the matriarch and she educates them and she helps preserve them. <laughs> okay, concealed ovulation. Concealed ovulation. Here I am on the UCLA campus with thousands of gorgeous women around here, and, and yet when I walk on the campus, I don't have the faintest idea which of these gorgeous women are ovulating today <laughs> and which of them are in the 28 other days of their, their period, and yet, if I was a chimpanzee and I was walking across campus, it would be, be obvious. I would look at the women who are bright pink in certain areas, who are letting off certain smells, or who are cra smells, or who are crouching down waiting. <laughs> so, for the vast majority of mammal species, females advertise ovulation and humans don't. The result is that we humans have sex. Most of our sex is at the time is at a time when the female can't be fertilized. Our sex is, in a certain sense, a waste of biological effort and sperm producing effort. What's the point of it? It's made possible by concealed ovulation. But when you reflect, there are advantages to humans if you can have a man and woman stay together and rear a child and remain with each other. Yes, it takes some glue to keep them together and Wasted sex is one of those important clues. <laughs> so, you, do you see that as something that has been genetically programmed through evolution and selectivity, or something that has become more of a, of a cultural tradition which is then taught and, and inculcated in a socialization of, of, of children? 
Of course it's genetically programmed. It's not a matter of a cultural preference that in the United States um, women are fertile two days a month and then whereas uh, in in Highland, New Guinea, women uh -huh. are fertile 28 days a month. We're genetically program programmed so that all women are fertile for only a few days a month. That's not cultural. Sure, but the explanation of why that occurs, and, and you use in terms of the uh, of a of a coupling of a male female coupling, so that using that to, to justify or to explain the evolutionary fact. But that could, but the but the coupling, which is your which is the data that you're using, that could be just cultural. It could be. You're, you're, you're absolutely correct. It could be cultural, but it's suspicious that, that every human society that we know about uh, has a husband-wife pair bond. Uh, there are a couple of societies where it gets fluid and the wife's brothers become more important, but among the vast diversity of human societies, there's marriage between a man and woman. And so this really is a universal for which one has to assume there's a genetic basis and not mere cultural program. Let's go to uh, what I think would be uh, our general favorite, uh, sex and private. Uh, you know, how on earth it, has that e evolved? You and my dog would be amazed. Why, why on earth do humans have sex and private? There are lots of other social animals. There are seagulls, and there are lions, and there are dogs, and they all have sex in public. So why can't humans have sex in public like any se Now, there are humans who have sex in public, but it's unusual, and it, call, it's calls, um, it calls for comment. Most human sex is in private. Why is it in private? Well, the answer is not written in some book that is one has to speculate. My speculation would be that humans are a social species. We are living in constant proximity to all of these sexually attractive men and women with whom it's imprudent to have sex because we got the pay bond and we got to co co cooperate to raising the children. Um, if, as I was wandering around at UCLA through the departments, every time I came into office, there would be some couple on the desktop having <laughs> sex, that would distract me and I wouldn't be concentrating on teaching geography. So my guess is that humans humans evolved to have sex in private so that we can function in a society in the presence of all these sexually attractive other people and not go off jumping into bed with them and thereby provoking the breakup of marriage. Okay, but, but how, how would this be genetically programmed as opposed to uh, uh, culturally inculcated? If, if it were if it were just culturally inculcated, then there might be 53 tribes that have sex in public and 47 tribes that have sex in private. But almost all have sex in private. I take that to mean it's not that there's a single gene telling you that to have sex in private, but that there's a strong genetic predisposition to have sex in private, which occasionally gets overrun in the hippie generation, etc. Sure, but it's sure. the exception. Sure. Um, it, it's. Um, it, 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 it's important to, to see the, 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 the sequence of causation in terms of uh, explaining that in an evolutionary sequence. I'm, I see the pieces, but it's not clear to me that the, 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 um, the sequence of causation is, is, is correct. Uh, so how can, we, how can we tease apart what's the cause and what's the effect? You're correct that you're having difficulty seeing the sequence of causation because it's difficult to figure out the sequence of causation um, in these matters of evolution of behavior. If this had to do with rats, we could do experiments with rats and we could change the behavior of rats and right. rather quickly we could discover what's the advantage of a rat having sex in public or in private. But with humans, it's not nice to do experiments with humans in which, I, in which for a year all French people have sex in public and all Germans have sex in private and after a year we can see what happens to the gross, heck, gross national product of France or in Germany. We cannot do experiments with humans and therefore we have to resort to these indirect ways, the, basically these comparisons. Comparisons among human populations and comparisons among species. Yeah, but then you have to go to another step. You have to show that whatever data you may get has has an has an impact of passing on certain kinds of genes or proclivities to do it that way. So it, it's a multi-step process, and sometimes it it seems to me a little glib to come up with evolutionary answers or simple evolutionary answers for for, for what seems you know superficially to look right. But but when you 
dig down, it, it, it's too complex to understand that way. Again, you are correct that evolutionary explanations for behavior can often seem glib and untestable. A way of making it more rigorous is to work out the phylogeny, the, the relationships among primate species of a particular behavior. So if you think that concealed ovulation had this function, look at the family tree of humans and apes and old world monkeys and new world monkeys. On this family tree, map the appearance of concealed ovulation and see when That's ovulation good. changed in the family tree and then see what happened to the social system. If ovulation changes whenever primates switch to having a male-female pair bond, then that allows you to deduce more rigorously that ovulation is associated with a male-female pair bond. Good point. And, 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 and if you do this for uh, sex in private, what do you see? Do you see a gradation or do you see a step function? In the case of sex in private, the only other primate species that I, social primate species that I know of that has sex in private is chimpanzees under some circumstances. So chimpanzees have lots of sex in public, but there's also a private sex called a consortship, namely when a female comes into heat, female chimp comes into heat, she may go off for a couple of days with one male, and that male may be the alpha male in the troop. So this suggests that the, the beginning of sex in private comes with chimpanzees and perhaps comes with this highly complicated social system that yeah. suggests that perhaps intelligence and complicated societies um, is the trigger for our private sex. Yeah, I, I admire looking for that kind of data, and I think we always should, uh, with the caution that uh, the, 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 perhaps the likelihood of that being the reason is low. <laughs> here, we, here we have, you've illustrated uh, the, the difficulties in coming up with causative explanations of changes in behavior in the human species in which we cannot do experiments or it's illegal to do experiments or it's not nice or it's immoral to do experiments. It's more difficult to come up with explanations than in the case of bacteria or rats where we can manipulate them, kill them, throw them away and start with new bacteria. <laughs>